I'm going to be looking at water and ice buildup in the freezer section on a Samsung fridge. Keep watching the video. Welcome back, it's Jeff Lepard from jefflepard.com and on this channel, we do product reviews, do-it-yourself videos, vacation videos, and so much more. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So I'm just at the freezer portion door of my fridge and as you can see, there's water, there's a water buildup leaking from the fridge and I'll open this up. First of all, you can see that it's not even closed properly because of the ice buildup and I'm gonna open it up and I'll show you what's going on inside. And you can see there is a huge ice and water buildup at the bottom of the freezer. So I'm going to uh, show you how to probably uh, reduce some of this, maybe give you some tips. But uh, what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to remove everything in the freezer compartment, take off the back panel, and I'll show you what's going on and why this is happening. So first, I'm going to need to clear everything out of my freezer so that I can take the shelves off and take the door off the fridge so you can get a better look. Now that the freezer has been emptied, I'm ready to take the shelving out. Don't forget, uh, if you have an issue with your fridge, water and ice buildup, don't forget to check out my other videos, and I have videos on that as well. So just to remove the shelf, you're just going to take these sliders, and you're just going to bring them out like so. Okay. And lift that out. Okay, we have the drawers. Uh, take it out. The bottom one just lifts right out. Just open your top fridges, lift the bottom drawer out. Uh, should you continue to uh, do this method? If not, you're going to skip uh, all of this just to see what's going on. Now, you can see the water and ice buildup. It's clearly leaking water and it's freezing on the bottom here. You can see the water dripping down. And uh, I'm just going to remove the doors so you can get a better look. And I'm going to remove this back panel. So the next thing I'm going to do is take the door off. And then I'm going to show you how to defrost your fridge or freezer. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to defrost the freezer or fridge, depending on what your issue is. There is three ways to do that. One, you can do a power defrost from your fridge function. Two, you can unplug the fridge uh, and allow that to defrost. Most people don't have that time, so they want to speed the um, defrosting up. They don't want their uh, food to go bad or the um, free freezer stuff to go bad. So the next uh, option would be to uh, use a heat gun or hair dryer to loosen up the ice. And uh, if you're going to do that option, this is why I'm taking off the back panel because you may remove the ice at the bottom, but the ice will still be built up behind the drain plug. That's what's actually happening. There's uh, ice in the drain plug and then you're going to also have to check to make sure that your drain is free and clear of dirt and it's not going to be backing up any water that's trying to go down. So I'm going to show you how to do the uh, power defrost on the fridge and uh, I'll also leave that down in the video description as well. Uh, it's quite simple. What you're going to do is just press and hold the power freeze and fridge button for eight seconds. So we're going to hold them both down starting right now and you're gonna see it enter into a uh, menu. Okay, and now it's gone blank. And what I'm gonna do is just hit any, uh, any button and you're gonna scroll here on the uh, left side until you see it uh, go to FD, just like so. And that means it's entering in uh, power defrost mode. And it's gonna do this for 30 minutes and it's going to defrost the fridge and the freezer. You may have to do it a couple of times. Um, it's good to do that. That's just meaning that it's uh, keeping the heating elements on and it's not actually cooling or freezing your fridge, but your heating elements are on for the fridge and the freezer. So it'll cycle for 30 minutes. It'll continuously beep and then it'll enter back into uh, fridge and freezer mode. If you have a model with a dispensary, to activate the power defrost, you're gonna use the freezer top left and the lighting middle right. That's how you're gonna use uh, the power defrost. Now we need to remove the freezer door in order to have war uh, room to work around the freezer area. So to do that, we're just gonna remove off 
uh, two Phillips screws um, or bolts on each side. And to use this, I'm just gonna use my uh, impact gun and I'm just gonna remove the bolts here. The bolts are removed. So now I'm just gonna hang on to the track and I'm just gonna lift up on one side. You'll see it's uh, just got a notch and the same thing on the other side and the door comes out. So the fridge is in power defrost mode. I'm also gonna use this heat gun to speed up the process to get this ice off. And I'm also gonna be doing the same thing behind the panel. If you have time to defrost a fridge and you just wanna unplug it for 24 hours, if you can, uh, then you won't have to do any of these steps. You can just uh, go ahead and do that uh, and you can skip ahead in this video uh, when I tell you the tips and tricks to uh, try to prevent this from happening. Um, but if you're like me and you don't want to do that and you have sensitive items that you can't leave overnight, then you're going to want to get this done as quick as possible. So that's where this comes in handy. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start using this to heat up the ice and then I'm going to crack the ice loose. And then I'm going to take the back panel off. I've used the heat gun a little bit just to uh, soften up the ice a bit. I'm just gonna use something sharp, just with an edge. Just gonna use this knife or anything. Just be careful not to damage the fridge. Get under the uh, ice and uh, lift it up. And the whole thing is coming out as one piece. Just like that. Now I'm gonna remove the back panel so that I have access to the drain plug. Um, now this wants to come out straight out and I can see that the ice maker is in the way So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, remove this out of the way first thing you're gonna do is just uh, Pop this bracket off and there's gonna be two Phillip screw uh, screws just uh, Up underneath here, and I'm just gonna start taking those out right now out just got to be careful because there's uh you have your water hook up and your your line hook up there so i'm going to get this out of the way so i'm just going to disconnect the plug right here just going to press down on the clamp and up that comes now to remove the back panel, I'm just gonna use a Phillips screwdriver. There is two screws, one here and one over here, and I'm just gonna remove those and the back panel should come out. Just keep in mind that it is frozen behind the panel. You gotta be very careful when removing the styrofoam and the, uh, the plastic panel out. Just be very careful. If there's too much ice, um, defrost it a little bit longer and uh, it'll pop right out. Okay, now you gotta be very careful. There is uh, wires hooked up. So just wanna move the screws first. Don't, uh, don't yank on anything. You can see that uh, there's plugs hooked up here. So I'm going to remove two of the plugs. It's uh, one plug, two wires, like that. Now that the back cover in the fridge is off, this is a very important step because this is probably the number one reason why your freezer has ice and water buildup. It's because of the drain plugs. So this is a very important step. You do not want to miss this step. So uh, I'm going to be removing the back panel off the fridge and you'll see that there is Phillips screwdrivers. So I'm just going to use my screwdriver and I'm just gonna take all the screws off the back so that you can access behind this panel and that's where the drain will be. There'll be two of them. There'll be one for the freezer and one for the fridge. So while you're back there, you might as well clean both of those out. Okay. There's the back panel and you can see there's a lot of dust on there. So you want to make sure, give this a wash uh, just to improve the airflow uh, at the back of the uh, fridge. 
Okay, so behind the panel, you're going to see two drains. So this is, while you're back here, one is gonna be for the fridge and one is gonna be for the freezer. So you're gonna to wanna to remove both since you're back here and make sure they're free and clear. So to do that, just uh, grab around the side here and you're gonna pull that out like so. And you're gonna see, just pull the whole thing out and take it over to the uh, sink for inspection and to clean. So right over by the sink here and you can see the top part of this comes off so what actually ends up happening two tiny little holes usually gets built up with uh, debris uh, you know uh, so you want to make sure that these are clean you can even use a uh, knife and clean these uh, holes out um, and also another another app you can see even if they're broke that's okay just ignore that uh, it actually just means that the water is going to be able to uh, flow uh, a little bit uh, better so just go through the uh, rinse them out and just make sure that uh, it actually will drain such as in my hand here clean them both back and then uh, put them back in place after you've put the drains back on just replace the cleaned cover back on the fridge now i'm just going to use the heat gun or hair dryer and just going to make sure that there's no ice left since we do know the drains are free and clear the water will um will flow freely you want to concentrate on this section here right down where the drain is so now that the water is free and clear now we're going to be doing some checks and this is very important because this is going to tell you what is going on with your freezer. So the first step, we've already cleaned the drains out. That's your most probable cause, which was blocking the ice from going down this part. While you're back here, there's two more elements that you wanna check. And first, you're gonna wanna check this right here. This is your defrost heater. You're going to want to be able you're going to want to check this part and there's another part you're going to want to check and that's over here. This is your bi-thermal uh, defrost thermostat. These two elements control um, what's going on in the freezer and it's very very important to check that. The first thing I'm going to test is going to be the uh, heating element, the defrost heating element. So you're going to need um, you're going to need a multimeter such as this one um, and don't forget I will leave a link down in the video description so you can buy a, an inexpensive one off of Amazon if you don't have one already. Uh, if you do have one then um, you're ready to go and uh, so like I said the first thing I'm going to check is this so now I'm going to have to take the leads off of each end to test the heating element so there's one lead here and I can see this is the lead going up here. So I'm gonna to have to pull this plug out and that's what I'm gonna do right now. So you're just gonna to wanna, to, there's three clips on the left side here. You're gonna to wanna to press them down to release the locks. Uh, it might be a little bit tricky. Um, if you can't use your finger, you can use something um, to poke it just to release it. Okay, there we go. There's the one, and now I'm gonna release the other, the other one. There we go. So right now we're gonna use the multimeter to test. To do this, now you're not gonna use the continuity uh, because we need to read the ohms. So depending on what type of multimeter you're gonna get, you're gonna wanna turn the dial to the ohm setting and you're gonna wanna go to the lowest ohm setting so that's going to be right here so let's turn this uh let's turn this on now when you test the defrost heater you should get a reading somewhere between 10 and 150 ohms um, and if you don't get any reading your 
defrost heater is gone bad and you're gonna have to replace that. So simply, I'm just gonna put one of the leads uh, on the uh, defrost heater right there. And I'm gonna put the other lead over here like so, and there's the reading. We have 58.9, and that is telling us that the defrost heater is good. Now with the freezer turned back on, we've exited the um, defrost mode, so we can see everything is, uh, everything is getting cold again. Now we're going to check the bi-metal defrost uh, thermostat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our multimeter. You're gonna wanna go on the continuity setting. Okay, right there. And uh, we're just gonna put the leads on the, uh, on the wires. So when it's cold, the circuit should be closed. So we should actually get a reading. Okay, and we do, so that shows that it is working. And if we wanna check that it's working when it is um, not cold, when it's hot, we should not get a reading. So if, if you wanna check that, you're gonna have to just uh, pop this off. Um, you're gonna have to reactivate your defrost uh, setting or take this out completely and get this nice and hot and test it and then you should not have a reading. So I'll do that right now. Okay, I've put the fridge back into uh, forced defrost mode and uh, I'm gonna speed this up using a uh, heat gun or you can use a hair dryer and I'm just gonna force the heat on the bi-metal uh, defrost thermostat. I wanna get this nice and hot so that I can test, uh, test if, it's, um, if the loop is open. Okay, so we've got this nice and hot. I'm gonna put the leads on the wires and we should not have any reading. That means that the bimetal thermostat should be in the open position and it is, we don't have a reading. If you get a reading, then you need to replace the bimetal uh, defrost thermostat. And when it's cold, if uh, you don't get a reading, then also you need to replace the uh, bimetal uh, defrost thermostat. So we know it is in working order. I'm gonna snap this back in place and uh, we're going to go on to the final step. Last but not least, we're going to change the EVAP drain clip. Uh, and I'll also leave a link in the video description for this as well. Um, when they designed these, they didn't really do a good job. You can see this uh, clip, uh, the old clip, it's not really going down the uh, drain. It doesn't really do too much. So you, you could do two things. You can either take this off, but um, you don't really have to. You can just push it aside. I'll do that right now. Um, there's no need to take it off. So I just moving it over to the side and I'm gonna take this one out. It's much, be uh, much bigger. It's going to conduct a lot more, uh, a lot more heat transfer more heat. So I'm just going to put this in like so. Slide that down. Okay. And I'm going to snap that in place. And I'm also going to bend the, the outer clips around like so. You can use a, uh, Touch that up after. Okay, the EVAP drain clip is in place and I just moved the old one just right beside it. Now the next thing to do is just put everything back together. So I've got to plug the defrost heater back in and the um, other plug on the other side. Okay, there's that. And 
just gotta line up the plugs and you'll firmly press. Okay, just make sure they're in, like so. Now we're ready to put the back panel back on. So we're just gonna push this up close and you're gonna wanna make your connection. Okay. Like so, okay. You we'll wanna make sure it's nice and flush. And then we're gonna screw it in. Now we're ready to install the ice maker back into place. So first I'm going to just plug the connection in. Like so. And uh, I'm gonna guide the uh, water through the uh, space there, okay. And now we're gonna just, you see the notches, we're gonna push that back into place. And it should hold on its own. And now we're just gonna put the two screws in to secure it into its final position. One second, I'm gonna get oh. And just put the cover back in place. Now last but not least, we're ready to put the door on. Just pull the tracks out and we're just going to install this back to where it was, like so, and we're ready to screw it in. Okay, we're just gonna screw these in now. Now we're ready to put the drawers back in, uh, the same way we took them out. So the last one, first we open the fridge to get this in, the bottom drawer, slide that into place. Okay, the top one, Gonna get this in place. Extend the extend the arms out, the tracks in the place. So that's it. That's how you repair water and ice buildup in your freezer. Don't forget, I'm gonna leave a link for all the parts in the video description for you to get whatever part you need and don't forget to check out the other video i have two videos regarding the fridge repair ice and water build up as well check that out if you're having those issues um, as well that's it i just want to thank you for watching the video don't forget to hit the subscribe button bash that bell to turn notifications on for all upcoming videos share the video like the video and guys leave a comment down below and we'll see you on the next video jeff lapard jefflepard.com. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.